we got a problem. Yeah, we gotta go. Okay. You got one out on lookout. I need you to get in the truck. I left the camera rolling because I didn't know what they were gonna do. Here they are. We gotta go. Welcome back to the channel. Lauren and I are starting our epic cross-country road trip back home. We're starting out in Southern California and we're gonna end up in Daytona Beach, Florida. Now, if you've missed any of the videos I've been putting out this last month, I drove this dually solo from Daytona to Phoenix, Arizona to my buddy Chad's house. Then we went to Dino's Get Down. I hung out with a bunch of West Coast hot rodders, flew back home to Daytona to go to the Daytona Beach Turkey Run, grabbed Lauren, flew back to Phoenix to pick up the dually, and we drove it to California for the Hot Rod Power Tour West. I wanna give a huge shout out to Chad, Jason, and Brian for taking the time to go through the truck while it was in Phoenix to make sure it was 100% ready to come back home to Florida. We just broke off from our West Coast crew starting our 2,500 mile, 35 hour drive back home. So sit back, relax, and enjoy our road trip back home to Florida. And be sure to hang around to the end of the video to not only see the adventures we get into, but also I'm gonna share some stats with you on how much gas this 454 used, how much it cost me, and my average miles per gallon. First fuel stop, and uh, we had this great plan of having pizza for the next two days. We went to get pizza last night, and <laughs> I guess it shifted in the cooler. Let me show you what happened. I had the pizza boxes in here posted up on some bottles of water, and I guess they fell. So all of our pizza is like soggy and gross, dude. It's like mush. Ugh. We're able to save some pieces, so we threw them in the Tupperware, but dadgummit, man. That was gonna be so good. This was some good pizza too. Check out this view from the all new museum now open, the Thing entrance. If you guys and gals watched the first video that I did on the trip out here, the uh, rest stop that I slept at in the Dooley is uh, right on the other side of that hill over there. And that's the one where I was really pumped about all the big rocks. And then Lauren just saw it and she was like, wow, those are some big rocks. Just walked in, the thing, there's a lot of things to buy. Ooh, they have shirts. The thing, oh, mystery of the desert. Where is the thing? You buy your fireworks here? It's $5 a person. <laughs> Told you, free I'd do it. So I talked Lauren into going, and uh, here's what we got so far. <laughs> they think. Yeah, you, you gotta speak up. It's loud in here. Okay, the aliens forced the dinosaurs to obey their commands and enslave <laughs> them, and they lived successfully among the dinosaurs as their masters. Is this how they controlled them? Yep. Oh, because of their advanced technology. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Oh no, incompatible with the T-Rex. <laughs> oh no. Oh, they gave the dinosaurs intelligence. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, so then they- So the dinosaurs could communicate telepathically among themselves. So the dinosaurs- They realized they were enslaved and they began rejecting alien control. There's a secret love story. Between the aliens and the dinosaurs? Yeah, the gentle species became very fond of the dinosaurs they controlled. They tried to keep, they tried to keep their relationship a secret from the mean ones. <laughs> it's a love story. It is a love story. Oh no, this T-Rex ate an elf. <laughs> Bro, what happened, bud? 
Oh no. Oh, are they the ones that sent the asteroid to the Earth? Yes. No. To wipe out their foes and win this war was through complete annihilation. If they could not the planet, no one could. They sent an asteroid. That sounds like a love story. If we can't have it, no one can. Before we move on, I know T-Rex has some tiny arms, but dang, son, those are the tiniest arms. The next part of this exhibit basically is saying how aliens have influenced the history. They influenced the Roman Empire. They have had a lot of influence in the rise and fall of kingdoms. And they've even had an influence in the United States of America. Oh, they caused the American Civil War. And then we walk into this. <laughs> you got the mid 1800s buckboard wagon, but what if it was used to transport the thing? Okay, so we still haven't seen the thing, babe. Oh, it keeps going, babe. Look, we got cars. Here's a 1921 Graham Bros truck. That is pretty cool. It's a precursor to the Dodge Ram. What if this 1937 Rolls Royce was really used by Winston Churchill? Driven by an alien. Driven by an alien. All right, so here lies the thing. What is it? Well, you could pause the video and read this. But the thing is on the other side of this wall. And, well, I guess you're gonna have to come to Arizona to see what the thing is. <laughs> we gotta get back on the road. We spent way too much time here. <laughs> if you guys wanna come see the thing, you gotta go to exit 322 off of Interstate 10 in Arizona. Now we're putting the hammer back down and making our way to New Mexico. in the middle of New Mexico right now. Um, Lauren has a bellyache, which is awesome. And we just left the grocery store and got some lunch meat for tomorrow so we can get back on our road sandwiches. And then we have some steak and peppers. And I'm gonna do my steak fajitas tonight without the fajitas, just the steak and peppers. So. Hopefully, steak and, peppers. steak and peppers. Hopefully, Lorna feels better because she's supposed to take a leg tonight. Got it. Yep. We'll see. But after she's done driving in a couple hours, then I'll take over. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm getting tired. I've been on the road 10 hours, and I got really frustrated at the grocery store because we were just, like, in the middle of nowhere. Everybody was on, like... I don't even know. Slow tech. Yeah, like super slow. Like, I gotta go. Come on, let's go. Anywho's, get to cooking. So we just left the Maverick gas station, and they had gas for two forty-six a gallon. That's officially the cheapest gas I've, had, I've seen. The Circle K right here across the street is two eighty-nine. Medium rare. Throw that on there. Should have probably broken up a little bit before I threw it on the grill. All good. Mm. I don't think we have a plate big enough for these veggies. Like, I, I could try to put it on here. You want to put it in a big Ziploc? Throw it straight in the Ziploc, or will it melt it? I don't think it'll melt it. Like, it's hot, but it's not that hot.
<laughs> Keep dropping peppers in the in the grates. Yeah. What's up, man? Well, I'm not tired, I'll tell you that. I left the camera rolling because I didn't know what they were going to do. Here, hold that. We got to go. Where are my keys? Oh, I just had an adrenaline dump. I mean, did he have to, like, 
kids walk right behind you? They were planning something. The, the one guy, there was three guys, one right. went around the back. They were, those two were talking and they, I did not break eye contact with them. Here they are. We got to go. Is that them? That, that's, he was on the phone, dude. And those guys just got real close to the truck. Like, we got to go. We are not, I don't think we're in a good town. <laughs> I don't know where we are. I, we just avoided an incredibly dangerous situation. And I'm not trying to like play this up at all. Um, so what you couldn't see on camera were two guys on bikes, pretty rough looking dudes. And I saw them across the street before they came over to us. So while I was cooking, I, uh, I went and I, I got prepared because if you're ever going to do any of this road trip stuff and you're going to be pulling over and you're going to be around a lot of people, you got to have some kind of protection. So I got my protection and I got ready for anything. I didn't think they were going to come over and they came over. Well, one of them came over and we, he was on the phone and he kept looking over here at me and Lauren. So I, my spidey senses went up like, dude, that's not right. Then he had two other guys come over. One rode over to him and they started talking and looking at us. And the other went around the back of the building. And that's when I told Lauren, you got to get in the truck. We got to go. Then the dude walked over by me. You saw that in the video. He walked by me and he kept looking at me. So I wanted to make sure that he knew I was watching him. So I said, hey, what's up, man? And he kind of acknowledged me, went around and was looking over down the street. And when he came back, if you go back and look at the video, you'll notice I was looking at his hands. I wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to try to reach for something or pull out something and try to attack me by himself. I don't think those guys were willing to try to attack me by myself. Um, just the two of them. And the third one was keep him watch. So I think once they kind of saw that I was going to be, I wasn't going to go down easy, <laughs> um, they, they rolled off. And I think you guys saw that they rode off and that's when we were like, all right, we, we, we got to just, we're, we're not even going to hang around. We're getting out of here. As soon as I was going to put the truck in drive, you saw that car pull in front of the truck and they were looking at us. So what I think happened was the dude, the first guy on the bike called those guys in the car. He was trying to keep watch on me and Lauren. And if he thought he could take me, I feel like they would have tried to steal the truck right there. But I think once he saw like, I'm not a small dude and I'm looking at him and I'm trying to get out of there. I think they knew I was ready for him. And I think he was waiting on his friends. And uh, when his friends got there, we were gone. So. They almost blocked us in. If they would have blocked us in, they would have had a really bad night. They would have had a really bad night. Um, well, number one, if they tried to block us in, like I got a freaking 454, mm -hmm. like with, with dually, with dually wheels in the back, like I would have just pushed the car out of my way. <laughs> like that would have been no problem. But yeah, if you're ever going to do this road trip stuff, uh, you gotta be as safe as possible. And I broke one of my rules. Uh, I'm tired. Uh, I got a little frustrated and I just wanted to get some food in me so we could get back on the road. Cause we're, we, we got a long way to go. We just got into Texas. I wanted to get out of New Mexico. I don't think I'm ever coming back here. <laughs> so, no offense, New Mexico, but that was not a great experience. Cool. I broke my rule. My rule was don't cook at night. Cause you're, you're a sitting duck. You're, you saw what I had to break down. Like I had, it took me a couple minutes to like break down our setup. If they came over when I just threw the steaks on, like we wouldn't have gotten out of there and I could have been a totally different night. I feel like we had some really good luck tonight. Um, and normally I grill, I'm at a pilot now. Normally I grill and eat at like a pilot or like a truck stop or a rest stop. And we decided to do that in the park, in the uh, parking lot of the hotel. But we've grilled out at hotels before with no issues. So um, I think it was just wrong place, wrong time. And I think that because both of us were paying attention, Lauren saw it too. She was like, this isn't right. She even said it before I said it to her. 
Um, I think that they, I think that we got really lucky. I think that, and I didn't, I didn't mean to like, I didn't mean to put you in that position. You didn't mean to, you didn't know. So for all the people out there that wonder, like, are, are you crazy? Why are you doing this stuff? Like, don't you ever get scared? Like, yeah, I get scared. I, I, but also I'm prepared. So I really enjoy this road tripping and um, traveling across the country and, and going on these big road trips, but like there's bad people everywhere. And I'm not gonna let me stop that from doing something that I love. So uh, we're gonna eat our cold food <laughs> because we just threw it in the back and left. <laughs> and then uh, also like when we were leaving, there was a cop that was pacing me. I'm like, dude, please don't freaking pull me over. I just need to get out of the state. So I gave Lauren the phone. I was like, if he pulls me over, just record the whole thing because this is going to be freaking ridiculous. But he left me alone, thankfully. Uh, anyway, yeah, I don't know. You got anything to add? You, you going to tell everybody how, how much of a dummy I am? <laughs> you didn't know. I mean, maybe your head wasn't on straight. I don't think it was, but. But I didn't know your rule. Yeah. So I could have reinforced that rule if I knew it, but I didn't realize. I just thought that we there we couldn't have. We were like we couldn't have because we traveled through the plains in New Mexico. There was nothing out there. Right, but I mean, like we, we didn't have, have just, any food. We had to stop at the grocery we could store have to get food somewhere else instead of staying at that exit. Yeah. What we probably should have done is just grabbed and go and gone. Mm -hmm. So. Well, hindsight. <sighs> and we're okay. Yeah, we're okay. I'm not going to let that ruin my road trip. It's still epic. I already ruined it. Lauren didn't ruin it. She's feeling better. I think she got an adrenaline dump too. Man, I don't mean to keep rambling, but that, just, that freaked me out. That really freaked me out. Let's eat. Let's eat. Give me a fork. <laughs> Good morning. We were just outside of San Antonio after our... Uh, uh, situation last night I just decided to put the camera down and drive so I drove to like 3.30 in the morning not a soul in sight the city was looking like a ghost town in a moonless summer night but we Lauren was a champ dude she slept at a rest area and uh, we just been we just been uh just been driving. So anyway, got up at like 5.30, then got back on the road at six. And then I just, I had to pull over again and sleep for a couple hours. Saw this scenic view. Let me show you what this looks like. That was the scenic view that we were promised. There was multiple signs that said, oh, pull over for the scenic view. I think that- I mean, it's pretty if you could see Maybe there used to be like a telescope or uh, some binoculars here and you could look out on oh, my phone's all foggy, but Texas, come on, man. Yeah. So, uh, not great. And also like this water right here is green. That's uh, pretty yucky back on the road. Well, we just made it through New Braunfels, which is actually where I got my blazer. But I flew out to New Braunfels to pick it up and then I shipped it home. Uh, that was many years ago. Jason, I hope you're doing good, man. And uh, right behind me is where I slept for the first night coming out to uh, the West Coast. Yeah, just right over there, right across the interstate. So good times, a lot of memories are being made on this trip. I also want to say Lauren's doing great, man. She has definitely pushed herself outside of her comfort zone. Uh, she was adamant she was not going to sleep in the truck the first, when we first started talking about all this. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, two o'clock in the morning and she's like out. So I'm like, well, we're not getting a hotel room and we're in the middle of nowhere. So this is what we're going to do. But I think we're getting a hotel room tonight. We're just outside. Well, we got a little drive to Houston 
So we're gonna make our way out there. She picked a killer barbecue spot. Well, we hope that it's good. And then we're gonna keep hightailing it. Hopefully we make it into Florida tonight and I'm gonna treat her to a hotel room so we could take a shower, get some good rest, and then finish our trip home. Let's go check out this barbecue spot. You're driving? Okay. Surprise me. Didn't think you'd be so eager to drive. I'm ready. Just bragging about how good you're doing during this trip. Thanks, babe. Pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. Sure am. I'm, now I'm excited for barbecue. So, I mean, <laughs> I've got my reasons. Yeah, I'm ready for it. We just brushed our teeth. Oh, I gotta put my lumbar support in. Yeah, yeah. Her back's doing good. The first, uh, before we left, she actually like sprained a muscle in her back and it's pinching a nerve. So it's been a, a heck been of a trip a for her. She's been a trooper, man. I'm telling you, she's a trooper. What you need? What else you want? I don't even care, I just want the brisket. I want the ribs. I want whatever size. I want a pulled pork sandwich. We should probably get like a platter. I definitely get a platter. They probably make cool. their own smoked sausage too. Oh boy. I spent $100. Yeah, worth it. You know what we didn't spend $100 on? What? A hotel room. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so this is what we're spending our money on. Worth it. Truth sacrifices just to try your barbecue. Just wrapped up our lunch here at Truth. The hour delay was 100% worth it. Worth it. It's probably the best brisket we've ever had. Yeah, for sure. Ribs are awesome. Pudding, though? Corn pudding. Corn pudding. I couldn't figure this stuff out. I'm gonna dream about it. It's like it, it's cornbread, but then it's pudding. It like doesn't know what it wants to be. It's I don't. So I don't get it. I don't get it. It's perfect. Anyway, we got. We're trying to make it to Florida. So what? We got eight hours to Pensacola from Houston, and it's what two o'clock. We got this. Yeah. She's gonna be napping after all that barbecue. It's good to be back in my home state. We're still about six hours from home. Um, we're in Pensacola. Funny story, the hotel we're staying at was the hotel we stayed at when we did the Power Tour East uh, in 2022 with my C10. And this was the hotel that Lauren got sick at and then we had to just go home on Friday and we couldn't go to Atlanta. So it's uh, fitting to end our journey across the country at this hotel. But we're going to wake up early in the morning tomorrow and just head right to the house. I mean, it really shouldn't be, it really should be uneventful. And the drive today was uneventful too. We, I mean, we put down another, I don't know, a thousand miles and was in the truck for 15 hours or so. So we're, we're, we're pretty beat. But uh, I'm going to get in here and get some sleep. I'll catch up with you guys in the morning. Just got up back on the road. It should be an easy drive today. What time is it? 6.30. 6.30 in the morning. I will say it was nice sleeping in a bed. We did not want to wake up. We are exhausted. It is no easy feat driving. No sense. Yeah. Day, we're starting day three of driving back. We're at Love's for our first fuel stop of the day. Lauren found, I got some chocolate covered almonds, but they were sitting on the floor. <laughs> yeah, she said it made chocolate covered almond bark. 
Well, that's going in the garbage. Guys and gals, we just made it home. I had to shoot this outro real quick, but Lauren could not stand to be in the truck anymore. What an epic road trip. We had some amazing experiences and some absolutely terrifying ones. Um, actually, speaking of, that was the first time that I have ever thought I was going to be in a true life or death situation. It was very very weird but um i'm glad we made it home safe and sound everything is good we're all right i'm not gonna let that hold me down or scare me or stop me from doing anything in the future just got to be a little smarter about doing my roadside grilling but i uh, wanted to share some stats with you guys and gals i drove 6,016 miles from daytona to los angeles and back i spent 1898 dollars in fuel I got 555 gallons. I averaged about 10.8 miles a gallon in this 454. Uh, uh, average cost per gallon was about $3.41. And on the drive back from Cali, Lauren and I spent 51 and a half hours on the road. Now that includes stopping and sleeping and everything, but we left at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time um in, from california and then we just got home at 1 p.m um eastern time on wednesday so if you're ever going to do this trip be sure to give yourself plenty of time to stop rest stretch um even possibly have a breakdown or two because that is a very difficult long drive um this actually looking through these stats makes me think of the most epic North American road trip I want to do from Key West, Florida to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. That's um, over 5,500 miles and again, 90 hours of just driving. But you're going from Key West, Florida all the way up into Canada and then going into Alaska. That would be an insane road trip. Maybe one day in the future, I'll be able to do that and share that experience with you guys and gals. But right now, I'm exhausted. I'm going to go inside and take a nap. As always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.